Now, uh, we've established that Chris hasn't been fired. T. Higgins, the Bengals receiver, would like to be fired. He'd like to be free. He'd like to be gone. Here he is from his youth football camp over the weekend on the simple question of whether he anticipates playing for the Cincinnati Bengals in 2024. I do anticipate it, you know, um, since he is, I grow, I grow up, you know, I love for since he that uh, I didn't think I would, but I'm uh, man, looking forward to it. T. Higgins expects to be playing for the Bengals this year. And look, I think he's just acknowledging reality. The word was put out there weeks ago that he'd like to be traded. He asked to be traded. He wants to be traded. You know what happened after that was done? Nobody called. Because nobody wants to give the Bengals whatever they're going to want, whatever they have to offer Mike Brown to right. pry him away right. and then pay him right. a crap load of money on top of it. So at some point you accept reality and yeah. denial, bargaining, depression, acceptance. He's accepted. He's going to be on the Bengals this year and he's either going to make 21-8 under the franchise tag or he's going to parlay that into a long-term deal. But the bottom line is he's going to get, he wasn't a first round pick. He hasn't gotten a huge pile of money in his career. He's getting $21.8 million this year. Should he get more? Yes. Should the Bengals sign him long-term? Yes. Should they trade him to someone who will if they're not going to? Yes. But they don't have to, and they're not going to. So he gets 21-8, and, and we see what happens next year. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a very similar conversation to what we had last week multiple times, right? It's the Brandon Ayuk, C.D. Lamb conversation once again, right? I think teams are starting to learn a little bit of like, wait, let's stop negotiating against ourselves and just throwing people money just because, oh, we drafted him. We liked him. We like him. He's done well, and now he's due, so we're just going to make him next and one-up the last guy, right? I feel like we're seeing a little bit of a change there in the guard as far as the NFL, a little bit going like, wait, wait, just because you're good and we drafted you and you're next doesn't mean you just get to be next and become the highest paid guy. That's done. I think, I think we'll see. But I know we, I can look back at quarterback contracts, wide receiver contracts and things and go, damn, it looks like the team negotiated against themselves and just kept raising the price on themselves. Like, hey, I'll give you 22. No, I changed my mind. I'll give you 23. And it's like, well, we didn't even ask for more. Yeah, I don't care. So that's where I think it is interesting as we look at this. And like to your point with the, the with what you said, you're exactly right. You know, if, if, if it was, ooh, T. Higgins is so great and such a need, the phone would be ringing off the hook for, hey, let's get something done. I'll give you a trade compensation. We know we got to pay him. We got to do that. He's kind of in a tough spot right now where he is, and especially with the Bengals and somebody at his position who we know is going to be paid one of the two or three top you know, receivers in football. Uh, so I feel bad for T. Higgins. I do want him to get more money. But, you know, honestly, 21-8 for where he is is probably more than what he could get. And when you break down the receiver contracts, what they actually are, like you did in your article this weekend, which I thought was awesome, right? I mean, I, I think that's more than he gets probably on the open market. So that's maybe one silver lining for the whole thing. Yeah, I was going to mention that. I pulled up these numbers, and it really is jarring. Yeah, now, it's great, future Mike. contracts are going to have that same fluff built into them, sure. but it helps put everything in perspective. Tyreek Hill, it's not a $30 million per year contract, in large part because the final year, $45 million, fully fake and phony, aimed at driving up the new money average. It's a four-year deal worth $23.8 million per year. That's what he signed when he went to the Dolphins. I keep getting pushback about, I, oh, it's an extension. It's an extension. He was under contract for another year. Yeah, but they took it and they ripped it up and they replaced it with a new deal. And the deal they replaced it with is four years, $23.8 million per year, period. The old deal doesn't matter anymore. It's a new contract. It doesn't say it, it, the extension activates after the current deal ends. The old deal is gone. A new deal is in its place. And it drives me crazy when I get these arguments. And it's all about pumping up the numbers so the agents can go around and say, I negotiated a $30 million per year contract for Tyreek Hill. You should hire me to represent you. It's so transparent, and it presumes a level of ignorance on the part of the people that they're trying to recruit, that they aren't smart enough to figure this out. That It just drives me crazy. They think we're all stupid. They think their clients are stupid. They think everybody's too stupid to figure out that – there's a bunch of phony baloney BS in the back end of these contracts that drive up the number. So 23.8 for Tyree Kill. Devontae Adams, 28 million. Nope. 22.5. 22.5. Still, you know, no need for a bake sale for Devontae Adams, but 22.5, far cry from 22.8. That's five and a half million less per year every year than what they've led us to believe it is. Cooper Cup, 26.7? No. 
2197. Again, that's the way it is. When in Rome, that's what happens. But as I worked through all these deals, I realized the best ones, Chris, are the most recent ones. Exactly. Michael Pittman. Yeah. Michael Pittman. Three years, 70. Wow. 23.3. 23.3. A real 23.3. Right. In comparison to Devontae Adams, 22.5. Tyree Kill, 23.8. Here's Michael Pittman with a three-year commitment in his prime. Three years. Not yeah. four, not five. Right. Not back ends that he can't get away from. Three years. 70. And he'll be right back at the table again. That's, that's, that's a great deal for him. That was eye-popping when I saw you write that in the article. That really was. Well, give me some other ones. There was another one or two that were great Calvin deals. Ridley. Yeah, exactly Calvin right. Ridley, right. a real $23 million per year. And if they cut him after two years, he will have made $48 million in two years. And then he's gone again. And Stephon Diggs has the best gig of all of them. He's getting 22-5. And he'll be a free agent again next year. He's getting 22-5 in cash right now. And he can. And he can hit the market next year. So maybe T. Higgins, I don't know, maybe he had an epiphany. 21-8. That's and then what I'm saying. The Bengals probably won't give me a 20% raise over that to keep me around next year. Right. 21-8 and I become a free agent. When I consider what these other deals are truly worth, right. I'll take that 21-8. I, I think so. You know, I think that's where and, – and, again, he's, you know, being around T. Higgins a few times in my life, right, he's not maybe um, – for lack of a better way to say it, as diva-ish maybe as other receivers, a little more low-key and chill, if you may. And I don't mean that to be disrespectful to other receivers. I, I say that knowing that they're awesome and that they want the ball and they should get the ball more. He just doesn't have that same way about him there. So, yeah, it seems like he is accepting. And probably because of all the things we talked about. Like you said, he was the first pick of the second round. He never saw that first-round type of money here. So this is big, still life-changing money for him and hopefully he can go out and have a big year and set himself up to whether he can make the bangles and put the squeeze on them to get extra money or he hits you know free agency uh but but yeah I, like you said in the article it, it is it's it's not bad especially for what that amount of money is for t higgins who's been hey we know he's kind of a a, a middle low tier number one he's a number two on the bangles of course because of chase uh, it, it's still a pretty good price tag for, for what he is right now. I'm going to go out of order yeah. slightly here okay. because you, you made a great point. First pick in round two. Yeah. It's always better to be the first pick in round two than clearly the last pick in round one. Maybe the next to last, next to last after that. I don't know. There's, there's a break-even point somewhere in round one where it's better to just not be picked in round one. Somewhere between 20 and and 32, you're better off being 33. Here's why. This year, T. Higgins under the franchise tag is making $21.8 million. Brandon Ayuk, who was drafted eight spots ahead yeah. of T. Higgins yeah, in right. the first round, right. fifth-year option right. at 14-1. Right. He's, he's making $7 million less and he got drafted eight spots higher. Right. What's wrong with this picture, yeah, right. NFL right. and NFL Players Association, where you have guys who were taken beyond round one who don't have this fallback of franchise tag money when they get to year five? And the union agreed to it. The union agreed to it years ago. And, hey, there was a time when they'd squeeze first-round picks to sign six-year contracts. Yeah, I remember sure. that. Patriots and Ben Watson 20 years ago in a big fight over a six-year contract. It, at least you can't lock up a first-rounder for six years under contract. But there's something wrong with this picture that Ayuk is at 14-1, Higgins is at 21-8. And Ayuk was drafted eight spots higher. Yeah, no, that that doesn't make sense, right? I mean, you know, but, but hey, hey, you're more talented. Hey, the league views you as more talented. Hey, you're really great. Actually, it would have been better for you to not be so great, and then you would have made more money. That, that that when you say that out loud, that 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 goes into the category of like say that out loud and listen back to yourself, NFLPA. Next time you throw that out there, you're right. It's 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 back ass words is what it is. Or what did I do? That I met some ass like backwards, that. ass yeah, backwards, yeah, bass yeah, backwards. Right, bass backwards is the next level say of way of way of saying ass backwards. Yes, to thank make you. The same thank you. Literal. Literal. Bass backwards. Literal. literal. Uh, that that's the problem there. But um, yeah, I mean, again, you know, it's it's good for the Bengals to have this tool as we talk about. It does give them one more year to figure it out. 
And, of course, we know they're a team that we look at and we go, they're in the Super Bowl window. And and I understand them using all their tools that are available to them to, to keep the band together here for as long as they possibly can. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.